Hey, it's Anton here with a, another video about my uh, experience with cervical dystonia. <clears throat> I thought I'd tell you um, a story that happened a couple of days ago. And um, one of the things that we like to do, my, my sons and I on this, um, on this, this bush block we live in, uh, in the Perth Hills, is to go um, riding on motorbikes and they're out every day doing that. I can't do it very often, unfortunately, because of, um, because of my dystonia. Um, when I do do it, it's, it's, you know, it might be um, once, a, once a week or once a fortnight or something like that, and I have to rest before I go. I have got to take uh, painkillers to, um, to get my pain down to a minimum, and I've got to keep the ride really short. Um, and when I'm riding, it's, it's sort of a, it's just slowly through the bush. Um, and I've got about a 40 minute limit before I'm, you know, my pain is too sore and I just can't hold my head straight enough to, to be able to see where I'm going. Um, but I'm always kind of like looking sideways out of the corner of my eye where I'm going. So, um, somehow I've managed to be able to sort of do it um so a couple of days ago i went for a ride and um and my son um who's much better than me anyway went up this um this this little mound of dirt it was probably um it's only a couple of meters high not very big um and i was in a, sort of a good positive frame of mind and and thinking oh look you know i'm out here doing this so so i thought i'm going to do that too and i went up the hill um this little pile of dirt and i didn't hit it straight and i fell um sideways um down the side of the hill with the bike on top of me um sort of half upside down um and um yeah so so it was a it was a shock and you know when anything like that happens i guess it's uh it's going to be painful um having a bike fall on top of you and my fingers bent back and my wrist bent back and i you know had the bike digging into the side of me and um on top of the neck pain which i already had um but i i picked myself up and my son came over and helped me lift the bike up and um and he said are you okay and i started crying um and the thing is it wasn't because of the pain i can handle quite a lot of physical pain i, I probably could have quite a severe injury and i suppose i think i'd be yelling rather than crying um if i was in a lot of pain um and I said to him, I'm not crying because of the pain, I'm crying because I'm frustrated. Um, and I got carefully back on the bike and um, rode back to the, the house. And when I got to the house, I locked myself into, into the bathroom by myself. And once I was in the room, away from everybody, I, I started really crying. Uh, I, was, I was sobbing. Um, and the last time I'd really cried to that extent, I would say would, would have been, um, a few weeks after the death of my dad, um, a couple of years ago. And, um, and it was, it was grief. It was the same feeling, you, you know, anybody who's lost anybody, um, knows what grief feels like you know it's 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 uh it's it's a uh, it's a heartache it's uh it's 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 painful in its own way it is pain but it's uh but it's it's emotional psychological pain um and um and i think you know the the fact that you know the last time i felt that level of distress and cried like that was you know when my da dad died is um tells you that this 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 was grief um i was feeling this um this deep sense of loss between um 
who I wanted to be and who I used to be and perhaps this fantasy that I could still be that when I was out riding on the motorbike and still do some cool things and try some stuff. Um, and this difference between that and, and the reality, the reality of what I'm capable of at the moment, which is, truth is, I'm, you know, I, it's, it's hard enough for me to, to ride on straight, flat ground, let alone any rough terrain or, you know, going up hills or anything difficult like that. Um, so there's this difference between who I used to be and who I am now and what I'm capable of. And, um, and it's a real identity kind of, um, you know, loss of identity there. Um, it's not just about, um, you know, wanting to do cool tricks or anything like that. I guess, you know, in terms of identity, it's like seeing myself as the, the you know, the type of person who might be a bit adventurous, who might take some risks, who would be the cool dad, who would do something like that. Um, and then the reality is I'm not, I'm not that, I can't be that. Um, and the, the, there's many, many lessons like, like that, that, you know, that just keep on hitting, you know, things that, things that I'm not able to do, things that have changed and every one of them hurts. Everyone is, every one of them is painful and there's a sense of loss involved with all of these things. Um, um, I saw an interview with um with um Jerry Seinfeld recently where he was um he had this quote about pain and he said pain is knowledge um rushing in at great speed to fill a void and the example he gave is you walk through a um your darkened bedroom at night and you kick your toe um, because, um, there's something in the way that you weren't aware of, but very, very quickly, like in an instant, you, you get this rush of knowledge, uh, that there is something in the way and you get this, the, the, the pain, um, in your toe as you kick it is, is the knowledge that there's something in the way. And if you listen to it and learn your lesson, you're not going to kick your toe again. Um, and I think you know that that applies whether there's whether you've got um physical pain or psychological pain or emotional pain um there's um there's messages in it and lessons to be learned and we've got to listen to um what those we've got to listen to to what our body is telling us and our body tells us um when we're in psychological pain as well um, and, and so, you know, the, the, the lessons keep on coming. I, I think I need to say that the lesson from that particular story that I gave is not necessarily don't attempt that kind of, um, thing again. Um, because sure, that's 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 one way of, of approaching this is to just avoid the things that cause you pain, and make damn sure that you are not going to be hurt in that same way again. You can do that with with things that cause you physical pain, and you know, you can do that with things that cause you cause you heartache and psychological pain. But pretty pretty soon, you you just find yourself you've got like a smaller and smaller and smaller life. Um, and I'm already finding that my life has got so much smaller since I've had this dystonia. Um, so you can do that, you know, just avoid all of those things that cause you pain. Or you can, you can also take the lesson that, right, things are different. Um, and I need to make adjustments. I need to change how I do things. Um, I'm not um, quite the same as I was before. Um, but it doesn't have to mean like give up everything. So, um, so I, so yeah, I just thought I'd share that story with you and, um, I hope you find something useful in that and I'll see you, uh, in a future video. See you later.